Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th iOS tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about the communication between VU and controller. And also we will talk about the important part of app designing application, which is VU life cycles and getting familiar with terminologies like VU did load, VU will appear and VU will disappear. So let's move on. Okay, let's talk about the model view controller. If you remember from review session, which is iOS tutorial number 10, I refer you guys to a link which was from Stanford University and it talked about model view controller and uh, communications within model, controller and controller and view. But since it is an important part, I decided to break it down in different parts and once we reach to that part, we will talk about it. So right now I want to talk about the communication between controller and the view. Suppose that we want to communicate between controller and view and controller wants to send a message to the view. We have to use IB outlet. If you remember from previous tutorial, which was a converter app, we used IB outlet to send a message from controller to the view. So this is the legal way to communicate between controller and view. And what would happen if the view wants to come communicate with controller. So we call it IB action, which was a button uh, or slider or anything else. It, it could just send a message to the controller and says, okay, something happened on view. And then controller decide what to do with that action. Here is an example of IB outlet. Uh, if you remember from the previous tutorial, uh, when we control drag from the text field, UI text field, to its controller, it created automatically this property which put this keyword which is IB outlet. So it means that the controller wants to communicate uh, with the view. And then when the view wants to communicate with uh, controller, it used IB action. So that's why we when we control drag from this button, convert to the controller, to its controller, which was view controller here, it just create IB action and we put our codes inside of this. So this is basically the difference between IB outlet and IB action. Okay, what is view lifecycle? If I want to define this term, I should say the series of stages that occur from the creation of the view until unloading from the screen. It means that we have some stages from the creation of view elements in the screen until it goes out of the screen. So why do we care? Because, for example, we want to know when the view comes to the screen in order to initialize some parameters or we want to know when the when the screen when the view go out of the screen in order to save some parameters for example user typed something and we want to save this data before they go out of that screen so we need to know these stages i will talk about the important stages and once we reach to that other parts we will talk about them later but right now i will just talk about three important life cycle of the view so imagine that we have just we have just one single view application that has only one view and user tab on our application and our view wants to come to the screen the first method that is called is view did load this is the most important life cycle method and this is a great place for initialization because it will be called one and only one time during the whole life cycle. And also all adlets are set. But be careful uh, about the geometry things and anything related to geometries at this point because we're not sure at this point that if this is the iPhone 4 size, iPhone 5 size or even iPad. So there's a better place to set the geometry things. 
Next, view will appear will be called. This method is called each time that the view appears to the screen. So it's not a good place for initialization because it could be called more than one time during the life cycle. But it's got a good place for updating the view. So if you have a tab view and you want to be notified once the user could go to the tab and then come back to your tab again, it's, it's a good place to update the view. Okay, suppose the user wants to leave the view. This time, view will disappear will be called and this is the best place to save the data. For example, remembering the scroll position or saving whatever user typed so far and that's this is the right place for storage and storing the data okay let's see how we can use these view life cycles let's start with the view did load how we can write this method you may see it before but just make sure that you see it right now i just write it again which is view did load so the compiler helped me to complete it and that's it you just have to put the super viewed load and that's all you have to do and then underneath you can so start doing whatever you want to do which is initialization this is for viewed load that's all you put all of your code underneath this line of code and this is for viewed load if you want to use view will appear you will do void because it returns nothing and you say view will appear and then inside you again called super view will appear and animate it animate it so and then here you will do your updating the view So view will appear, you always the format is always like this. View will appear, bool, animated, and then the first line is super view will appear animated. This is always true for each time that you want to use view will appear. You have the same thing for view will disappear, which is called once the view wants to go out of the screen and it returns nothing. I'm just writing in view will disappear this time and this time we say super view will disappear animated and here we store data or saving whatever user type and whatever related to storage in future tutorials i will show you the practical examples and how we use these lifecycle methods but for right now you just have to remember the format and why do we use these view lifecycles that's all have a good day until next time